Hello, how to draw a precedence graph. First of all, what is it for? With the precedence graph, we want to show if transactions are conflict serializable or not conflict serializable. First, let, first let's talk about the notation. T1 is transaction number one and T2 is transaction number two. And R1A is a read operation on the field A in the transaction one and write to a is a write operation uh, sorry w to a is a write operation on field a in transaction two a commit is a commit next let's talk about the rules when do we have to draw the arrows we have to draw an arrow when there's a read operation on field a and it is followed by a write operation in another transaction on the same field or when we have a write operation in transaction one on field A and it is followed by a read operation in transaction two, sorry, in transaction two on the same field. Or when we have a write operation in transaction one and it is followed by a write transaction in, sorry, write operation in transaction two. And we have one last case. We have a read operation in transaction one and it is followed by a read operation in transaction two. And this doesn't matter at all. What else? We ignore commits, we don't care about them. We just act like if they're not there and we always look forward. What that means, I will show that in the examples. Sometimes we ask to draw such a graph for this and I think this is very hard to work with and very hard to read. So I translate it to this nice table, which has basically the same information. We have transaction one, transaction two, and all the transactions, like we have the one, the one, the one, the one, and they are all put in here, and all the twos are he in here. Of course, we don't need the numbering here anymore. So let's start. We start by first saying we have two transactions. So we have two nodes, and then we start here. We have a read operation in transaction one, and it is followed by a read operation on X in transaction two. We don't care about read operations, but we have a write operation down there. Let's draw an arrow. And we care about that. So we should draw an error, arrow here. Then we check the next operation in time. We have a read operation on X in transaction two. And we have a write operation on X in transaction one. So we can also draw an arrow here. And therefore also draw an arrow here. Basically, we cannot draw any more arrows here because everything is drawn already. We're finished, but let's do this for the purpose of completeness. And by the way, we first we check this one and this one. And the next one was this that points to this. Okay, let's check the next one. We got a right on X and we got a right on X in here. So we draw an arrow here. We already drew this arrow here. The next we have a read operation on Y and we have a write operation on Y. We don't draw such errors. They don't matter. It's in the same transaction, so nobody cares. One note, I think it's much easier to distinguish between transaction one and two in this table instead of checking all the numbers always here. You can do whatever you want. Anyway, we're finished. This has a cycle in here, so we know it is not conflict serializable. And let's get over to the next example. Again, we have transactions over here, so we start by drawing the transaction nodes. Okay, let's start. We have a read operation in transaction one on field A. We have a read operation in here on field A, but it's read and read. We don't care about read and read. But if we look further, we have a write oper he operation here, so we can draw an arrow here. I mean, we don't need to draw the arrow here. We can just draw it here. But just to make things clear, right? Okay, next we have a read operation on B. We don't care about the write operation because it's the same transaction, but let's check the other ones, no B. We have a read operation on B, we don't care about that one, but we have a write operation on B, so we draw an arrow here. And also we go from one tra transaction one to transaction three. So next one, read A, no A, no A, that's fine. Read C, no C, Read C, we don't care about read read, so that's fine. Write B, write B, 
and read B. So we have a connection here. By the way, this is what I meant when I said we only look forward. We don't care about everything that happened in the past. We just watch in the in the bottom. Okay, so we draw an arrow from one to three, but this is already there, so we don't care about it. And as you see, by the way, we have a commit in here, but we don't care about the commit. We just ignore it as if it would not be there. Okay, next one in time is the read operation on B, no B, read operation on C. We have a write operation on C, so we care about this one. And we draw an arrow from T3 to T2. Then no B in here, no A. So we're finished now. And we know we got no cycle in here. So this is conflict serializable. Okay, next example. This is, by the way, taken from the Wikipedia. We have three transactions. And let's start. We have a read operation in A on, on A and we have a write operation on A in transaction 2. So let's write an error here. And we have to, of course, check further. We have a read opera a write operation on A in here. So we also draw an error here. Again, we have a commit here, but we don't care about that. At least regarding to Wikipedia. So we draw the error here. So next operation is the read on B. We have no B in here, no B in here, so everything's fine. We have a write operation on A, so we care about this write and write, and we care about this write and write. So we have an error to transaction 1 from 2, and we have an error to transaction 3 from 2. Next, we check this one. Write on A, write on A, so we also care about this one. So we should draw an error from transaction 1 to transaction 3. But that's already there, so yeah, then we're finished, and we now know because we have a circle, a cycle, which one is it? Anyway, because we have that, we know it is not conflict serializable. Yeah, and that's basically it. I hope it helped. If you have any questions or comments, put them in the comments. Read the video description. I will update the video description if I find any errors in this video. And thanks for watching.